everything. And now I am an logician, I mean, and I am talking about problems which in, in the end, I mean, they are, they come from uh, logical research. And however, I mean, what I want to try to, to show in my, in my talk is that uh, there is the possibility of uh, uh, linking this uh, analysis of problems in propositional logic with some framework, with geometric and mathematical framework, which is directly inspired by the work of, of Grotenik. And basically, what we I am using very uh, in my talk will be about the, the, the Grotenik generalization of the notion of a, of a shield from topological spaces to sites and the properties of, of topologies, basically. So, this is the so this talk brings together some contribution that I made during the years, uh, starting by my book with Mark Zabadowski. Then there is some more recent work with Luigi Santo Canal, and then also some work that I made by, in papers or only by myself. So uh, the point is the following. We consider a definability question like that. I mean, a, a propositional language could be it seems to be very poor, but in fact, it is very, very rich, and it may have a, a, an additional structure which is hidden. <coughs> this additional structure is very often uh, related to the problem of solving equations in extensions algebra, so in free algebras. Uh, most of the questions that I am addressing are formulated in a purely symbolic and syntactic terms. I mean, that's a very quite. Uh, However, in order to investigate them, we will see they take advantage from algebraic formulation and embedding into some geometric environment. This is the point. But the question is by themselves are purely, say, symbolic. And so what, what, what we are using, as I said, it all is a shift, so the sides. And we combine them with a, a, an appropriate uh, extra structure, which uh, is, is useful to recover definable, uh, definable um, sheaves or something like that, using some combinatorial statements, some methods, basically some uh, Aaron Point say games. So the, the talks will be a mixture of these two uh, kind of tools. So now I first introduce intuitionistic logic, and I will go via. Uh, algebraic semantic by heighting algebras. I think that most people here know what they are, but I mean, I mean, just uh, since I have plenty of time, I will recall the basic definition. The heighting algebra is a structure where you have a set and uh, basically uh, operations of distributive lattice with uh, bounded, bounded distributive lattice. And we have also this. Uh, New this additional operation, which is pseudo relative pseudo complement, which is intuitionistic implications, and it's, which is uh, defined uniquely characterized by the, the uh, adjointness condition, which is displayed there. Okay, there is also some equation of presentation of this kind of algebra, but we don't want to get into. And what is intuitionistic propositional logic? Well, it's the set of formulae which are built on the connectives, which are corresponding to the like, right operations. And the logic contains exactly the, the, the formula which uh, evaluates to true in any aging algebra, no matter how one, one can uh, interpret value. Which means. This is a presentation which is perfect and it's independent on any, on any kind of calculus that you have. Uh, so so in, in some sense, we confuse uh, formally in between propositional logic and terms in the theory of writing algebra. This is perfectly. Uh, you know, more, more legal and it, it makes no problem. And then uh, when maybe this is the wrong thing to do. I mean, the, the, the relations, I mean, uh, the, the derivability relation P improves U means that P minus U is equal to truth in any heightened algebras. And as I told, I mean, usually people introduce such, a, such kind of validities using a kind of calculus. Now, heighting algebras are ubiquitous. They come very often in mathematics. And they, uh, the main example is the open set of a topological space. And another example, which is in fact a special case of the phase previous one, is the, what is, are called cryptic frames in uh, the literature in classical logic, which are just 
whole set in our case, and the aging algebra is the downward goes a subset of a whole set. But we also have some sheaves of a sheep. This is another remarkable example, and also some sheaves of a sheep. This is the main example we are using. And many others. I mean, you can find other solutions. In all cases, not the above cases, the underlying lattice is complete. It is called it's post polar is a local. So you have infinite infinite joint that distributes over finite means. And the relative pseudo complement is uniquely determined by the lattice order via the junction conditions. And the fact that these heighting algebras are complete implies that you have an extra structure which is available. Not only, and um, so this is an example that so then we'll see better afterwards images and dual images among morphisms. You have less and greatest fixed point for monotonic endomorphs. You have, in cases where, like for instance, it happens with pre sheaves, uh, the, the heighting algebra is such that also the opposite lattice is an heighting algebra, then you have also the dual operation of implication, which is called different. Sometimes difference exists, sometimes does not. And uh, here you have what happens in the examples. And if you have a, a heightened algebra and you have a, a, a morphism between two, say, let's say, simple example is that you have two, two topological spaces and an open continuous map, uh, or you have two pre sheaves and a natural transformation, two sheaves and a natural transformation, then using uh, the inverse image, I mean, which is uh, inverse image, real inverse images in, uh, in the case of topological spaces, in the other cases, just a uh, level by level inverse image. Now, now this, this inverse image is a morphism of fighting algebras, and it has a joints, meaning that you have a, a direct image and dual direct images, the two, like, the two adjoints to these uh, operations. Now, how did this, this uh, um, Constructions are computed depends on the cases. I mean, for instance, in sheaves, you, you need to take the images and then you uh, apply the, uh, the closure of the associated sheaf or the local uh, local closure if you want to use the language of lovely or Plato. But in any case, that such a thing exists. And also, if you have a monotonic map, since the lattice is complete, you can produce fixed point by using the iteration up to a certain. Ordinals, which is depends on the lattice. Now, what is the interest of logicians? I mean, however, is in uh, algebras which are free or maybe finitely presented. Because I mean, these algebras they, they correspond to the variability, to the derivability in the pure calculus with uh, finitely axiomatized theories. Okay. So if you have a theory axiomatized by a finite uh, many axioms, I mean, then this produces uh, a finite represented algebra. Finite represented means that you have the free algebra and you divide by a finitely generated formulas. These algebras are not complete, okay? So you cannot expect that they have the structure that you have seen in, the, in this other. But can we expect, but in a, in another sense, I mean, can we expect more than what is given by the definition? That's the point. And of course, I mean, uh, one should expect that there is no, nothing. But this is not true. This is not the case. There is some extra structure, which is in such context. And this extra structure is useful to address logical problems. This is the point. And this is our definability problem. This is the problem that we have. I want to address in my talk. And then we, I also try to see that, uh, I mean, it's not just a pure um, speculative algebraic interest that I am talking about that, but that may have some practical consequences also from the point of view of, of, the, of the logicians. Now, our problem can be stated in more categorical terms in as follows. We have the opposite of the category of finitely presented heightened algebra, and we want to investigate what kind of categorical structure is available in this case. Now to do this, I mean, this is, this is H -A -H -A -F -P is our opposite of the category of finitely represented heightened algebra. And I will embed it into a larger category where um, the structure that they want to have exists. 
And then uh, to find, to recover our original category via duality and see what kind of uh, this structure is definable already in the smaller category. This is the idea. Uh, Silvio, un momento. Sembra che ci sia un problema nel microfono. Ah, yeah. There is a problem with microphone, it says. Yes. I'm sorry. For the people in Sweden. Is it better so the people on Zoom can tell me whether it's better to speak with him here? No, in fact, that seems to make it slightly <coughs> worse, I'm afraid. No answer? The answer on, on the chat. On the chat yeah. Someone said they were sounding okay. Is that, it's okay now? That, okay. that sounds better. That sounds better. Yeah, see the chart. I don't know what's happening today with the chart. Uh, it means you have to take a little bit. Well, can, can you hear me? We can. You, you can, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But for people here, there is no need to open the microphone. <laughs> the room is not so large. Okay, can I go on? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there are dualities in uh, in algebraic logic. I mean, in classic algebra, there is a well-known duality, the Sakya duality, which is built up on uh, principle duality for the stability lattices, which is quite nice. But this is not very useful for us for that because I mean, these kind of dualities, they don't well. I mean, what? Do, the, the main structure that we, we need is the product in our, in our op opposite category, which is the co-product in the original one. And these co-product products, they are, they, are not, they are not very well behaved. So, I mean, it's quite hard to, to, to investigate what we need. On the other hand, we are looking for some duality which is specific to our problem, which has maybe is maybe it's less, uh, uh, it's more, it's a little bit more ad hoc, but which, in which, I mean, we, we have uh, properties which are important, meaning that products are uh, standard. Images and dual images and difference or whatever it is, they are defined in a, in a, in a manageable way. This is, this is the main difference with respect to, to standard writers in algebraic logic, like uh, the, the Sakya duality and for Foyage and Ali or Volva duality. Or, now, usually, you, the dual of an algebra of a theory is the space of these points of the models. In the Boolean case, the dual of a well, a Boolean algebra you can see as a theory, like an algebra algebra is a theory. So, the dual of, of the theory is the set, the, 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 the set of the models, which you can uh, uh, can define as the, the home set of from the Boolean algebra to the home of into the two valued algebras. And since we are interested in the finitely represented cases, in the case of Boolean algebra, finitely represented is finite. So we have a very nice duality with finite sets. But the point is that, uh, I mean, if you go to for more complicated situation or like in deficiency logic, then the finitely represented algebras are far from being finite, even if the algebra of quantum is finite. Then, I mean, you, you cannot uh, uh, expect to recover the, 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 the original structure from just from the set of models. You have to give some structure to the set of models. Okay. In a such a duality, you use topology. In this duality, you use topology for that. In our case, we want to use shears, shears and the so the, the duality that we have to do, we have in mind that have a geometric and a combinatorial component. So a geometric component is the shields on the side, and the combinatorial components are even for the segments. This is what the, 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 the now uh, the combinatorial is, uh, structure is called the bounded by simulation, and uh, it is defined by via certain games, and uh, uh, this is what we are typically doing. Take the case of images. Models are structured as shifts. If images exist in our category, they must be shift theoretic images, which are defined in a standard way. 
Shift your head to the side in fact, definable because they are closer than the bounded or sufficiently half bounded by simulation. And then this proves that images exist in the original time. This is the strategy. And we are following the same strategy for all other cases that we have. I, in fact, I mean, there are even more cases that you can analyze. I mean, I refer to my book with Malek in case you want to. Uh, what is important, I mean, what, is that, I mean, uh, in my, from my view, the pure geometric uh, framework is not sufficient to recover, to, 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 to get our goal. You need a combination between the framework, the geometric framework, and the combinatorial structure. The geometric framework is driving you to the right construction. It shows what you have to, 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 to think, consider. And then you need some extra tool to handle the final data. This is the, 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 the philosophy of the And here, uh, so here is the, is the geometric component. We consider the category of finite look at set with P morphism and the sheaves over them with the canonical Gordon topology. I mean, what I, I, I mean by this is the following for set is a is looked if it has a greatest element, okay. And a P morphism is another preserving map that satisfies this condition, which says simply that I mean the image, the direct image is of a, of a, of a downward set and a downward set. Well, the order is reversed with respect to the difference in the uh, uh, semantics. I think more uh, similar to what is used in categorical setting. And then the converse are simple. I mean, the canonical topology is the biggest one which makes a presentable uh, fun for sheaves, but I mean, you can describe, describe it easy, easily. A cover, uh, a sieve is a cover, it contains a subjective. And then you can take sheaves over this. The typical sheaf that we are using is the so called sheaf of uh, evaluation, which takes uh, the, the, is the OM set taking into the category of a uh, uh, of um, uh, four set of and other maps. I mean, these sheaves correspond to, to finite predicate models in over a finite propositional language. In case the finite force set is a, is a, is a power set, is a, is a power set. Or then with the reverse. And now we have a functor from our original category that we want to study into this category of shears. And this is defined by it maps a, a, a force set to the heightened algebra morphings from our finite represented heightened algebra into the downward scroll set of. This is the, 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 the functor. The functor preserves uh, limits and it is conserved. And this is the important thing. Now, we need to have a manageable description of the category of shifts which are dual to finite represented hacking calculus. And for that, we need the additional structure in terms of games. And, uh, well, I mean, if it, there is a, a natural structure of models, which is a so called by simulation relation. This is, can be described in terms of, of the shift structure because it's, mean, it's basically closure under the, the local, uh, local or real operator associated to the, to the support. To the local support. But by simulation is not sufficient. So we need, because there are classes of models which are closer than the by simulation, which are not. Set of models of a formula, so we need more, and we need what we need. We call bounded by simulation, so by simulation up to a certain level, and this is defined by error uh, types by say games in the following way. So suppose that you have two evaluation over the set of the same uh, finite force set, and we have a uh, two players. Which is, this is a standard kind of games that we use in. Uh, Model theory, finite model theory. And uh, the play that you have the player one chooses a point in one of the two courses, player two answer by choosing in another point, and they go on in this way. But the rule is that if we have moved, if the last, uh, the last um, uh, move, the last position is this one, then in the, in the, in the next move, we can only choose points which are below. 
Okay. And so uh, we have a game, the game can be finite or infinite, depending on what we have. And the, the, uh, the player two wins if, uh, if succeed in keeping the evaluation of the points in terms of pairwise football. Now we have uh, uh, the by simulation equivalence means that player two has a winning strategy in the above games with uh, infinitely many moves. And bounded by simulation up to end, if the same, but the, the moves, the, the, the game starts, stops as as end moves. And then it's useful to have also a zero uh, equivalence, which means simply that the rules of the model, the models are already the same. Okay. Uh, now, what happens is that, I mean, uh, we say that if we consider a subsheet of the evaluation sheet, then we say that it has a B index. By simulation index, and if it has the following property, whenever it contains an evaluation, and I have another one which is an equivalent, then the other one is also that. Okay, so the the, the sub sheaves which are have a being a sire some B index are called to be um, said to be definable, and similarly, a natural transformation between definable sheaves is. As B index M, if and only if whenever you have two M equivalent evaluation and you apply to them the natural transformation, you get zero equivalent evaluation. Such natural transformations are said to be defined. Now, I mean, our duality is that it's stated rather simply, and it says that the, the category of finite and presented fighting algebra is dual to the subcategories of sheets. Formed by the definable sheaves and definable natural So, uh, definable sheaf is the sheaf of models of a population of formula, and the B index is related to the, to the maximum number of nice simplifications of the problem. There is a perfect uh, between the two, this two, the syntactic notion and the B index. And the definable natural transformations is correspond to the dual of a substitution. This is the and now we can we can uh, uh, see whether this framework works. And in fact, I mean, what we can prove this is a theorem. We said that definable sheaves are closer than their images and dual images along definable natural transformations. This means that the, the opposite of the, height, the, the category of heightened algebra is a heightened category, and that the factor, the embedding factor, preserves the heightened category structure. Heightened category means precisely that, I mean, that you have uh, images and dual images along, along the lines. A regular category in which you have also dual images along the along the along the models. Also, I mean, in, in our category of shifts, this is a special category of shifts. And uh, the heightened algebra of some objects, they are also co heightened algebras. And uh, this is a special case because that means topology is rather simple. And uh, this, this uh, difference of sub object is uh, closed. Uh, uh, if you apply it to definable uh, sub sheaves, then it gives you a definable Now, uh, I mean, I, with the proof, of this statement, it goes to prove it. I mean, in a sense, I mean, what you have to prove is clear because I mean, the setting is defined. What you want to show is that if, you, if I take a natural transformation having a B index and the two is some shifts having a B index, that the image in the sense of shifts, which is the local closure of the image, has a B index. This is what you have to prove. And this is translated into this uh, combinatorial statement about games, which I don't want to comment now. But of course, I mean, it, it might not, it's surely not trivial to prove this lemma, but in a sense, I mean, the lemma is something that you recover immediately from, from your life because I mean, it's, a, it's simply a restatement of, uh, of what you have to prove. And the main tool to prove it is uh, the use of the so-called rank, uh, which is, this is a tool which was introduced by Kip Fine in the electronic model logic. And uh, the, the rank is the following. You have an evaluation. You take the sub-evaluation of the sub-sub uh, of the cones, and you count the number of non-n equivalent sub-evaluation inside that. And this is the rank. 
I mean, the, 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 the equivalence class is modular bounded by simulations for a fixed bound, very, very finite. And so, I mean, so it makes sense to count this. I mean, this is the main tool to prove the, the, the dilemma. I don't want to say anything more. Now, this is that the consequences are the, from the logical point of view. I mean, this is the completely equivalent to the fact that uh, our, in this, uh, that uh, uh, HA, the finitely heightened algebra of is a heightened category. This is the same as saying that there is an interpretation of second order composition of geometric calculus in two ordinary geometric calculus. Another way to say this is that in geometric logic, for this geometric logic, enjoys uniform interpolation. So that when you have to compute the tag interpolant, interpolant, this is independent on, uh, on one of the two formulas you want to interpret. And uh, I mean, the interpretation of second order quantifiers uh, marks a formula to the intuitionistic formula that you can obtain in this form in the following way. One takes the definable sheaves corresponding to the formula, take the image of the dual images, compute the, the index of it, and then you come back to the problem. The procedure, the procedure is completely effective, although it's not uh, absolutely not optimal, but it is not very no, well known what is the complexity of that. But still, I mean, uh, this is a, uh, an effective procedure. And this is another reformulation of the same theory about the closure or the fact that the dual of, uh, of the category of hiking algebras, finitely projected hiking algebras, has uh, uh, images and dual images. And this is another, another formulation or equivalent formulation of this theorem, and which is in a modern theoretic context now, not in a true theoretic context, but in a modern theoretic context. And it said that the first order theory of Heiting algebra admits a modern completion. And what it means, uh, modern completion, I mean, uh, uh, I can show you the meaning of it. I mean, suppose that you have a constraint, which is a conjunction of equations and inequations, but with parameters from a Heiting algebra. And you want to check whether it is possible to expand your algebra in such a way that this becomes true. Okay, so you add more elements and you <clears throat> that it becomes true. The same problem is if you formulate for description logics, it, it, it has an important uh, and the following meaning from an application point of view that you have, say, a database of ecology and you want to expand it in a conservative way. On the other hand, I mean, this is a kind of new, of new style. I mean, uh, here I have uh, also the negation of equations in the kind of field theory, you don't have the negation of, negation of equations because in fields, uh, non-zero non, um, non elements are invertible, so you turn, can turn out the equation into equations. So, but uh, here we, we need also inequations. And so in order for this, so this, uh, the, this, the, this constant here to be solvable in, in an extension, it is solvable if and only if this formula is true. And this formula involves these fixed quantifiers, which are the images in the dual images. So, and this is perfectly computable. Okay. And if this formula is true in the original algebra, then you can expand it in such a way. Otherwise, you cannot. Meaning that expansion will collapse on the Uh, we call existentially closure uh, an algebra such that any constraint with parameter from the algebra which has a solution in an extension has a solution in the algebra. This is the same as algebraically closure, meaning that because we have also negation of equations as, as I explained. So the theorem says that this class is elementary, another way to formulate it. And the problem whether the, the now, now I mean this is an axiomatization of all the essentially for the hiking algebra. And if it's axiomatization, this means that the the, the, the fact that uh, this formula, if you put an existential uh, first order existential quantifier here, this is equivalent to this. Okay, this is the axiomatization, if you need this axiomatization. And I mean, these are not real quantifiers. I mean, these are abbreviation for complicated formula that we compute with various to the tool with the images and so on and so on. But I mean, but they are not real quantifiers. Uh, okay. 
Now, the big problem which is still open is that whether a finite optimization of the essential code of hacking algorithms exists. This, I mean, the mayor and you care, they solved it for the six, six amalgam of all locally finite varieties of hunting algorithms. So you have only a few varieties of all hunting uh, algorithms which are amalgam. I mean, the existence of a model completion implies amalgam. This is why I am mistaken. And so, uh, Two of them are not locally finite, and for this two, the problem is solved. So. But for the, the locally finite one, it has been solved by, by Daniel and Juncker. And uh, with my students, uh, Luca Carai, we have solved the problem for the, the, for the Brownian side part, uh, fragment, which is the disjunction of three fragments of the Okay. Now let's go then now discuss about the question of these points. I mean, we cannot directly apply our duality for X points because, I mean, we are considering monopolic maps which are not hiding as a so they don't have duals. But, I mean, let's state our problem more precisely. I want to investigate what is the mu calculus of uh, overall intuitionistic basis. So, this means, this means that uh, I have two formula in intuitionistic logic. And if the formula is monotonic in the variable x, then I can add further operators mu of x, mu of x, which are for the greatest and for the lowest and the greatest x point of this test. Now, the fact that it was proven by Mark Dyer, the Russian magician in 93, is that, I mean, the mu calculus collapses over intuitionistic logic, meaning that this formula are always equivalent to plane intuitionistic logic. And this is a rather surprising result. And uh, this means that this sequence of iterating six point converges as a, 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 a finitely many steps. So, what we want to derive this result from another result, which is even more surprising, which was proven by uh, a Dutch guy, which is called Gutenberg Thurman. And this is the following uh, very surprising result. It says the following take a formula. Of intuitionistic propositional calculus, which is not necessarily monotonic, and apply this sequence. I mean, you start with the formula, and then you, you consider the formula that you obtain by replacing the variable x by the formula itself, and you go on and you go on and go by producing this, uh, this uh, sequence. And when this happens, is that taking equivalence classes under provable equivalence, this sequence is ultimately periodic with period two. Which means that at a certain point, you have that phi pi, the nth element of the sequence, is equivalent to the nth two plus two one. So it's not stationary, but it has period two one. Of course, I mean, if we uh, replace, if the problem is monotonic in X and we replace by false room inside, then you, you get that the, 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 the approximation of the fixed point is stationary because it is, it, it, it is uh, increasing. So if it is increasing, the fact that you have period two means that you, in fact, you have period one. Rutenburg proven theorem was proven in, uh, by Rutenburg in a zone of symbolic logic in 1984 by a uh, 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 involved, I mean, to me, almost incomprehensible, clearly in fact true. That has been also formalized by Ilkov, by, by Tadeusz. Uh, Lita. 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 Okay. And uh, then we supply a semantic proof. The problem of, of the existence of finding a semantic proof of this theorem was open for some, for some time. And we use our duality and our bounded by simulation. Now let's we let's show what happens in the case of classical logic, which is much easier and which is kind of in classical propositional calculus, Rutenburg theorem holds with index one and period two, which means that if you, if you take our formula, then after three steps, this becomes equivalent to the now we want to reinterpret this statement into the category of finite and presented Boolean algebras. And that way it's sufficient to well, finite and presented is meaning is finite. So in this case, I mean uh, our algebras are, are dual to finite sets. 
<laughs> and so we we can we we can restate in, in an algebraic terms in the following way. Consider the algebra A of X of the polynomials over an algebra A, which is defined by the co as the co-product of the Boolean algebra A with the free algebra of one in your Okay. Now, uh, our statement becomes the following. Suppose that you have a finite projected Boolean algebra, which means finite in this case. And consider a map, an endo map of this, which commutes with the co-product injection. So you have this this uh, algebra, your injection to its co-product, and you have your map such that this time will commute. Then you have the community to square is equal to zero. Okay. But since this is uh, about finite mm -hmm. Boolean algebras, you can dualize it to find itself. And the co-products with the algebra polynomial becomes to take the Cartesian product with the two element set. And so you get the following that for whenever you have a finite set T and a map from T cross two to T cross two is commuting to projection, then this map is such that F cube over F, 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 F is equal to F. And this is an easy exercise to look at the students, and it's quite trivial. So now we want to use the same with uh, from deterministic logic using our duality. Well, I mean, of course, we now finite representative of the finite. And, yeah. Now, first of all, I mean, uh, the the analog of the free hiding of, of the two, uh, well, the co product. The algebra of polynomial was done with using the, taking the coproduct of the free algebra on one generator. Now, here the dual of the free algebra, the free hiding algebra on one generator is the evaluation sheets over the two elements of the four set with two elements. Shape, okay. And so, what we need is the following that if you take a natural transformation from uh, uh, an evaluation sheet cross H, cross this H2 into itself commuting over with the first projection and the heading of the index. This is ultimately periodic to the two. This is perfectly the formulation of the Wittenberg theorem in our system. And this is what it means. I mean, uh, it's a natural transformation of this kind, which is like that because it's commuting the first projection. And you have to find an N, a big N, in such a way that you have this. This, uh, this big N will depend on the, the, the B index of a psi of psi. Okay. Because I mean, the, impo the important thing is that this has a, has a B index. Now, first, I mean, the idea is, is always the following. You take the purely style, forget about the B index and the combinatorial structure. Move the statement with, uh, without considering it, and then try to move it to, to the general case, to the case where you also have the idea. So, ignoring game and definability, you can get the following lemma, which is not, it's a more direct complication of what happens to in the classical case. Of course, it's not so simple because these are not any more sets. But I mean, if you take a natural transformation here, then for all rooted four sets, there is an, an, an index and an, an natural number such that we have this periodicity, but this index depends on the portion. Okay. And actually it is it can be taken to be the, the, the length of the maximum of the maximum length of chains in the course. Gate of the course of the final course. Another big jump is that uh, is consider consisting to find the computable end. Which does not depend on B, but only on the B index. And this is also proven by some notion of Blanc. This is not exactly the notion of Blanc that we have used in uh, uh, for, for images and dual images, but it's something rather similar to that. Built up in a similar way. Of course, the rank based argument does not have, give us uh, an optimal bound. So now the open question is to refine this magic argument to get a better bound. The other thing is that is the following that we now we have also found an example of a 
Three are the hacking guys in the market, which is not the ultimate in New York. Because I mean, the one that are considering the root and root theorems are the endomorphisms that fix all generators but one. But one. And so if two, I, uh, two um, three generators are moved, then we are in some when you have endomorphisms which are not. Fixed. But now the question is to consider uh, which morphism has this ultimate, ultimately periodic character and give estimates for index inferior. We have some little results in our paper. And then another uh, question, I mean, which is also quite easy to focus using the, our duality. And now it is the question of solving the equations of three algebras. This is a problem coming from computer science applications. I mean, uh, it's also called uh, unification modulo equation, modulo theories, e unification is called in the literature of computer science. And suppose that you have a, a finite set of pairs of terms, and you want to find uh, in the countably generated free algebra, in the Q counters, which is the same, find a substitution which makes the, the, the two terms equal. Okay. So, I mean, this is T1 sigma, if and only if T1 sigma is the same as T1 sigma is equal to T1 sigma in the free algebra. And this is called the unification problem. Okay. Unifi a a question of unification was considered in the, in, uh, in the 90s when people moved, uh, wanted to generalize the, the writing theory completion, not many completion algorithms to the case of, say, AC theories, uh, when you have some equation, typically associative commutativity equation. And these are literature on that. And uh, the question is that what we, we, we want to, to investigate is to find the best possible solution of the problem. Finding whether the problem is solvable or not, I mean, this is not a very well known but also to find what are the best possible solution. Meaning, the best possible solution means that any other solution can be obtained from the best one, from one of the best ones by via an instantiation, okay? So in the free theory, if you have no equations, there is a most general unifier and there is a, a, a unique model of renaming, best solution. For Boolean case also, this is, was an result by Martin and Nikko. There is also the most, a most general unifier. In Hiking algebra, there is not a most general unifier. This is easy to see because of, comes from the fact that the, the calculus has the disjunction property. From the disjunction property of the calculus, you immediately Prove that there is no most general unifier. But however, unification is finite, meaning that there are finitely many best substitutions, such that any other solution of our problem is it can come from an instantiation of this finitely many best one. And proving this, it, it has a big consequences from the point of view of logic, because I mean. One of the classical problems in composition logic is to recognize admissible rules. So the rules that you can add to the calculus and without improving any new theory. Okay. And the rule is admissible, of course, if, if it does not uh, alter the, the, the set of theory. Now, if unification is, is finite, we can recognize whether the rule is admissible or not in a very simple way. We compute the best general solution for the conjunction of the terms, and we apply the conclusions. If this, if this, this uh, best solutions are theorems, then the rule is admissible. If they are not theorems, it's not admissible. Since a uh, theorem is decidable, this is done. Uh -uh. But, but we need to, to compute the best possible to show that, that a, a unification problem has a finitely many best solution and to be able to compute that. This is the other thing. Uh, the sidability of inference rules in intuition sociology is an old problem by Friedman. The problem was solved by Ribakov in 84. We want we show the solution of the Friedman problem using unification theory and using uh, characterization of finite represented projective. So again, we, we, we try to, to move from our symbolic problem to some kind of structural algebraic geometry, more mathematical structure. 
Now, uh, and of course, you use divide. Now, the problem is how to characterize the first thing. I mean, let me, let's try to characterize projective, finitely projected projective algebras in the human. Okay. This seems to have nothing to do with unification, but it has to do a lot. Let, let me see how, why. Now, suppose that the, this is the, the characterization. Suppose we take a sub sheaf of an evaluation sheaf, and we say that this has the extension property. If it, the following happens, whenever you take an evaluation which is in this sub sheaf, if it happens that an evaluation which is, may not be in, in, in the sub sheaf, however, if it happens that whenever you restrict the evaluation on every cone below the root, and this evaluation belongs, this restricted evaluation belongs to the sheet. Then there is another evaluation, which is almost the same as the original one, it refers only at the root, and then this belongs to, 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 to the sheet. Basically, this means that if you have a finite Kripke model, there is a part of the model which you can block, it, which is fixed. And then, if this part which is fixed is a model of your formula, then you can modify the forcing in the remaining part of the model. To make it a general model. Okay. <clears throat> now, the theorem says that the definable shift is dual to a finitely represented projective fighting algebra if it has the extension property. And from this characterization, it follows that definable, such definable shifts are called closed under shift E. And so, uh, this is as a consequence from a right point of view. It says that. Uh, uh, Every finitely generated hiking algebra, which is a subalgebra of a finitely projected projective, is projective itself. This is one of the right properties. Yes. And then now, how to, see, how to apply this to unification? Now we have our unification problem. We can reformulate in the following way. So, what is the solution of this problem? You can see this you take the algebra A, which is the free algebra over X. Divided by this congruence, and any map from this algebra into a free algebra is a substitution which solves the problem in vice versa. Okay. Now, if you replace this free algebra with a projective one, this nothing changes because I mean the free algebra is not going to start as projective algebra and so on. Now, and um, next step is to redefine what, what happens when a unifier is uh, better than an algebra. And this is can be rephrased in terms of, of uh, commutative triangle. So sigma is better than tau if and only if there is a, a, an R where well, I mean, sigma is better than tau if and only if there well, I mean, is yes. uh, it's better than tau if and only if there is a Martin's commutes these triangles. Okay, so this is really good. so by the way, by this uh, formulation, it follows that unification type is a categorical environment. Because finitely presented is a notion which is defined in categorical terms using the fact that I mean, a home front of the self people of the limits. And so, projective to be right about projective is a categorical notion. So, if you take so from this, I mean, it immediately follows that if you take the, 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 the post algebras, they have not a unification time because the Boolean algebra has a unification time and the Picard will start with This is a quite simple reformulation, but it has. Strong consequence. And in addition, if you want, you can do a lie, so you can just reverse all our rules. And now, in addition, I mean, now, so a unifier is this, uh, you can reinterpret in our, in our setting. A unifier, unification problem in a definable sheet with the index. Uh, and a unifier is a morphism from a um, definable sheet, which is a dual of a projective, so it's injective. And so on and so on. It compiles on the unification. But now we can use the fact that projective algebras are characterized by the extension property, and that the extension property is preserved by shift image. So we can replace any unifier by its image. And this will be better following the definition of, uh, of comparison between unifiers. In addition, the the, uh, the you can compare these images with inclusion. So we have to we have our, our unification problem, which is this the definable sheet, and we consider the sub sheets which are definable and which are have this this um, this um, 
of the actual block. And now we need another observation is that taking uh, closure and uh, bounded by simulation maintains the extension property. Then at this main, at this point, our search is bound because the number of uh, of uh, the, 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 the sub sheaves having a B index and uh, whose index is not is is smaller or equal to the B index of the problem is finite. So we have to, it can be possible. Of course, this is not this solves the Friedman problem. It is not an optimal solution because I mean uh, this gives an uh, well, I mean said in this way it would, it would produce a non-elemental life. But however, I mean then uh, the, the, the argument can be refined, and I found a double exponential bound, and then uh Emil Jarabek found an optimal bound. But I mean every every Investigation and unification started from this consideration about projectivity and so on, which is uh, comes into the picture. Now, these are my conclusions. I mean, now, what from my experience, I mean, people working in propositional logic make extensive work to investigate properties, having some combinatorial trial work, or that can be proven by specific tool having some combinatorial trial. This work may have important applications. I mean, this is, uh, uh, it should not be underestimated. If you have, I'm good giving classes on uh, uh, model checking with temporal logics and with propositional logics, proposition temporal logic, you can, you can uh, verify interesting properties of a distributed system, even using finite model check, uh, finite state system and so on. So, propositional logic is important. However, the methods, the methodologies that are employed in such investigation are usually very ad hoc. And what I is trying to, to show in my talk is that it was trying to perform this work in some conceptual terms. Maybe the solution, if the problems are difficult, you cannot expect to have <coughs> completely conceptual solution. But at least to formulate the problem in the right way, in, in a context which is a uh, uh, which is uh, refers to some robust and some uh, uh, well well established mathematics and i think that they, what, what i can give you an example that uh, what what in what in this legacy could be useful because i mean as you have seen i mean the main tool that i have is with ships or oversights so we got contribution for that so that's 